Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 as usual and today I've got something very special for you guys because we're going to be starting a new video series called Top 5 Videos. Now these videos will have kind of a tier list in them with the top 5 tanks for each role in the game and today we'll be starting out with heavy tanks. Now the reason why I'm doing these videos is to give you guys an orientation to which tanks are kind of the best at the moment. Just as a short disclaimer, this is my personal opinion and obviously you might have a different one and that might be valid as well however these tanks have actually statistically also proven to be uh, the best tanks of the game and that's why it's just not only me making something up here but th these are actually the statistically speaking the best tanks of the game usually and also uh, well the main reason why i'm doing these videos is because maybe not all of you have got the time to watch a really long review on each tank that you're considering to grind out so maybe these top five videos can give you just a very short overview about the pros and cons of each vehicle and which one you should maybe get so for the heavy tanks we'll be starting off with the number five spot and Right there we're going to have the IS-7. Now way back in the day when there were only two heavy tanks in the game, which were the Mouse and the IS-7, this was basically the best heavy tank in the game that you could have. And it stayed that way for quite a while, but recently the IS-7 has come down from the number one spot quite a bit, just because of the introduction of other very competitive heavy and medium tanks that just basically outperform the IS-7 in most situations. However, that doesn't mean that the IS-7 is a bad tank. It is actually still really strong if it gets to the right situation. And the reason for that is because it's got really good top speed. I think it's about 60. It's got great armor all round on the sides and front. The only weak spot being the lower glaciers. Really, the turret is almost unpenetrable. And the only weak is the top armor which will um, make you have problems with RT sometimes and the rear armor obviously. Also your gun has got really high alpha damage so when you hit a shot it will really hurt your enemies and just because of the way this tank is designed if you manage to get up close and uh, just bounce the shots of your enemies and you'll just punish them so so much which is really what a heavy tank is supposed to do in the game. So. The IS-7 is basically ideal for the heavy tank role. However, obviously it also comes with some downsides, that mainly being a very low DPM value, so you really want to avoid prolonged engagements with your enemies. Also, except for the high alpha damage, the other stats on the gun are quite disappointing with slow aiming time, bad accuracy and quite a bad reload time, and also the penetration is a bit underwhelming. And another problem that the IS-7 has is that it's quite sluggish with high terrain resistance, so it will be very difficult to manoeuvre, especially if you're on swampy terrain. And one last drawback that the IS-7 comes with is that it has got somewhat bad gun depression, it's not horrible. You can sometimes go hold down, but it really usually prevents you from using that awesome turret armor of yours. So that also kind of limits the situations in which you can really excel in that tank. And that's just really the only reason why it's not higher on this list is because it is somewhat situational and on open maps that will usually get picked apart by RT. So that wraps up for IS-7 and let's move on to the number four spot. So at number four, we're going to have the 113, the tier 10 Chinese heavy tank. And actually, this will come as a surprise for some of you guys, I guess. But in my opinion, the 113 is one of the best tier 10 heavy tanks that there are out there at the moment. And the reasons for that is because it is very speedy. It's got great maneuverability and traverse speed. And that means that it can often wolf pack with medium tanks and get to advantageous positions quite quickly. It's also got quite decent alpha damage and rate of fire, it's actually balanced quite well in this tank. So it's not quite as much alpha damage as in the IS-7, but it gets more DPM and that kind of balances that. The accuracy on the move is very good as well, the shot dispersion isn't very high and the frontal armour is actually quite decent too. It is armoured at 60 degrees I believe, so a lot of shots will ricochet and the turret is very well armoured frontally as well and even from the sides, although the armour is not quite as reliable as on the IS-7. 
And that brings us to the cons of this tank, because one of the problems is that the armour is covered with quite a lot of weak spots, especially the lower glacius and the cupolas on the turret, and side and rear ar the side and rear armour on this vehicle are basically non-existent. So, I mean, you can side scrape, but flush shots to the side will always go in on the 113, and the rear armour just it doesn't exist really. And the same thing goes for the turret, side shots and rear shots of the turret will usually penetrate as well. Also, this tank, because it is Chinese, gets hardly any gun depression, which will again, as with the IS-7, stop you from taking advantage of that great turret armour of yours. And also, the aiming time and accuracy on the 113's gun are not too overwhelming either. However, in my opinion, still the 113 is a great tank, just because it's a perfect all-rounder really, and in my opinion that is what a heavy tank is supposed to do. The 113 gets a decent amount of hit points, it's actually on the higher end of hit points as tier 10 heavy tanks go, and it can just get into four positions quickly and hold them, and basically there is hardly a situation in the game where the 113 cannot cope, the only one being probably in places where it needs gun depression because it just screws up in those kind of scenarios because it doesn't have any. So that was the number four spot, a tank that I personally really like and I'm looking to grind out as fast as possible. Um, so without further ado, let's have a look at number three. So here we are with the top three tanks and we will start these off with the FE215B. This is the tier 10 British heavy tank. And actually this is an amazing heavy tank in my opinion. It has got probably the best gun out of all the tier 10 heavy tanks with amazing DPM, great aiming time, ridiculous accuracy and awesome penetration. The only downside to this vehicle's gun is its somewhat underwhelming alpha damage for heavy tank which is only 400 but except for that the gun is just absurdly good. It is super accurate and this tank has got a rear mounted turret as you might have noticed so it can side scrape quite effectively even though the side armor is not extremely high it's got a very high hit point pool of 2500 hp and it actually is not too slow either i mean it is not like a medium tank but as heavy tanks go it is actually somewhat speedy its armor is not too bad either i mean it is not amazing but it will force your enemies to aim for weak spots usually, which is more than most medium tanks can say for themselves. Compared to other heavy tanks, the armour is not really too great, and also, because your engine is front mounted, it will be set on fire quite often, and your ammo rack will be taken out frequently as well. Then, also, in many situations, having a rear mounted turret can be a disadvantage, especially if you're fighting in urban environments, you're trying to come around corners and cities, and then often a rear mounted turret can be a problem. And because of this tank's quite weak rear and side armor, it's very prone to artillery damage and it's also quite easily detracted. Still, this is a must have for every heavy tank driver, in my opinion. It is not really a typical heavy tank because. Its role in a World of Tanks battle is not really to be in the front line, but rather to provide supporting fire from the rear. But there is hardly a tank of the game that is better at doing so than the FV215B, because it just chews its enemies apart with that amazing gun. And I mean, really, this could be the most awful machine of the game, as long as I put this gun onto it, it's always going to be strong. Really, the tank itself is not so overwhelming, it's just the gun. But I mean, the tank as a whole is not horrible either, because you've got good health, acceptable armour, and I mean, your mobility is not too bad either. And, uh, I mean, one last disadvantage might be that the gun depression is not amazing because the hull is in the way sometimes. But it could be a lot worse as well. So, that was the number three spot, and we've still got the top two tanks to go, so let's have a look what they are. So, many of you might have been asking yourselves where the T110 E5 um, gets to be on this list, and it is in the number two spot, in my opinion. And, I mean, this is an uh, all-round amazing heavy tank it is very mobile while not being insanely fast it has got decent power to weight ratio and good engine power top speed traverse speed it's got a all-round very good gun 
with good gun depression, good aiming time, good accuracy, good penetration. But the only downside to this gun is again the low alpha damage of only 400 hit points per shot. It has also got quite good frontal armor on the turret and the hull. However, the lower glacius and the cupola on the turret can be weak spots that enemies will take advantage of. The main strong suit of the T125, in my opinion, is that it is an all-rounder. It can basically do anything and do it well. No matter in what situation the T110 gets into, it will always come out at least equal with enemy tanks or on top. It is just such a good all-round vehicle, which is really what you're looking for in a tier 10 heavy tank. However, also the T125 has got some disadvantages, these mainly being its bad side and rear armor. I mean, when I say bad, I mean really bad, like anything can penetrate those. And that means that you cannot perform maneuvers like side scraping and that kind of stuff in the T-125 as effectively as you can in other vehicles. And also, as I said, the alpha damage is somewhat low, but really those are the only two cons to this all-round amazing vehicle. RT will feast on it because of its low side and rear armor, but except for that, this tank is just all-round really, really good, and I can recommend anyone getting this tank. So, um, that only leaves us with the number one best tier 10 heavy tank in the game at the moment. So yeah, here comes the drum roll, and it is the T57 Heavy. This is, in my opinion, the single best tier 10 heavy tank in the game. It's just ridiculously overpowered, in my opinion, and um, I'm going to explain to you why just right now. It has got ridiculous burst damage with its autoloader clip with having four shots, each dealing 400 alpha damage, which makes a total of 1,600 alpha damage. Now that is just really, really high, especially considering that the delay in between shots in the magazine is only two seconds, and that is really, really good. That means it's able to unload its entire magazine within only six seconds, and that is just insanely strong. Also, it gets quite good accuracy and gun depression, and the magazine reload is only 20 seconds, so that makes for a very good DPM, actually the highest of all tier 10 heavy tanks. And that, in my opinion, is what makes this tank so overpowered, is that it has got really high burst and sustained damage. Usually, autoloading tank has got very high burst damage, but therefore its DPM isn't very good. But with the T57 Heavy, it has got the highest burst and the highest DPM of any of the tier 10 heavy tanks. And that is just what makes it so strong, in my opinion. And, I mean, really, if you think of it, once this T57 Heavy has emptied this entire magazine into you, you try to rush him because he's reloading his clip. If you are in another tier 10 heavy tank, at the most, you'll get two shots into him during his reload. And then he'll clip you again for another, at the most, 1,600 damage. I mean, if you're lucky, it's maybe he's gonna ri you're going to ricochet one shot and he's going to do 1,200 damage, but still it is a ridiculous amount of damage output. Also, the gun depression of this tank is actually quite decent, considering that it has got an oscillating turret, so if you're used to driving French heavy tanks, then this will come as a breath of fresh air. Also, this tank is not sluggish at all. I mean, it is not ridiculously fast, but you can move around in it. And the armor profile is quite complex, meaning that enemies firing at you will often be confused by the profile of your turret and just maybe fire at places where they have got no chance of penetrating. Still, your armor will not always hold up to the standards that other heavy tanks set in this tier, so especially your side and rear armor are garbage, and even your front armor, your low glacius and the cheeks of your turret are somewhat vulnerable. The ammo rack is very easily damaged in this machine by shots penetrating the lower glacius, which is a very big problem, and also the aim time on this tank is somewhat low, and the problem with that is that the aiming time is more than two seconds, so if you want to fully aim your shots, that will extend the time you need to empty your entire clip. So often you'll have to choose between either having that really high burst in a very short period of time and sacrificing some accuracy for that, or going for the full aim and therefore sacrificing some of your DPM. So it really depends on the situation. And then the final drawback of this vehicle is 
the kind of low ammo capacity of only 36 rounds, which is the equivalent of 9 clips. However, the drawbacks, although they uh, are not neglectable, still, in my opinion, they do not nearly compensate for the ridiculous amount of power this tank gets just by having great burst damage and insane DPM combined in one machine and that's why in my opinion the T57 Heavy is the strongest tank at tier 10 in the heavy tank tier. So that kind of wraps up this video and I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry if I maybe didn't list up your favourite tier 10 heavy but objectively speaking and also in my opinion these are the top 5 tier 10 heavy tanks. Maybe however you have another opinion and if you do then please make sure to share it in the comments. I'm happy to discuss the topic. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more of these top 5 videos, maybe of medium tanks or tank destroyers, please like this video so that I know that you appreciated it. And let me know in the comments what tank class I should do the next tier list about. So, thanks for watching as usual, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.